Good evening and welcome again to the Limavari Gospel Hall. We have come this evening to bring a message in the gospel. And on behalf of the believers who meet here, uh, when they're not under lockdown, uh, we will give you a very warm welcome. Thank you for taking of your time to stop by and listen to a gospel message. Now we will read from the scriptures, but before we do so, uh, I want just to speak to the Lord in prayer and commend our time to him. Our Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we draw near another time before the throne of grace. Thank thee that uh, we can approach thee and speak to thee in every time of need. We do thank thee for uh, the Lord Jesus, the blessed person through whom we come, the one who loved us and gave himself for us, died on Calvary's cross to bring salvation to a world of lost sinners. And we bless thee that so many down through the ages have trusted him and had their sins forgiven and their souls saved and now they are in heaven. Millions more are believing and trusting and on our way to heaven. And so we thank thee for this occasion that we have come together to open the scriptures and share this wonderful news of the gospel with all who will stop by and listen. We pray that thou wilt take up the word of God this evening and give that help to exalt the Saviour and give that help that souls might hear thy voice and if not see it come and trust a blessed man of Calvary. We commit these moments to thee and seek heaven's help in our Lord Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. Now we're going to turn to the scriptures again and uh, I just read one verse for those who have heard the gospel. It is a well-known verse, but uh, the sad truth is that many in our world have never heard it. John 3 and verse number 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I'll read it again. I, I likely quote it a number of times in the minutes that lie ahead. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we trust that God will bless his word. I do believe that these are the very words of the Lord Jesus, spoken one night long ago in the city of Jerusalem. A man came to visit the Savior. We don't, we don't know uh, whether this, this little meeting took place on the street or on a rooftop, wherever it was, a man called Nicodemus sought out the Lord Jesus Christ and he would like to have a discussion with him about religion. But on that night, he discovered that he himself, although so very religious, he wasn't in God's kingdom and he wasn't on the way to God's heaven. And I believe that on that very evening, through the words of the Savior, he trusted the Lord Jesus and he was in the kingdom of God and as sure of heaven as if he was already there. And so it would be our desire that even using these words, the Spirit of God, if you're not seeing, would bring you to an understanding of your need and to put your trust in him. And so uh, let me just use the words and, and again bring this beautiful verse to your heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Savior is explaining to Nicodemus how he can be born again, how he can be saved, how he can have everlasting life. And he has already told them that in order that it would be so, that the Lord Jesus himself must be lifted up upon the cross at Calvary. In other words, he must die. And he said, the reason that I have come, the reason that I'm going to die on the cross is because God loves the world. I want to speak to you then about the love of God. The love of God. Three things I say about it uh, very briefly. I want to think about the expanse of God's love. You know, we are used uh, thinking about vast expanses on planet Earth. Well, here's the greatest expanse that we could ever anticipate and ever begin to contemplate. And it's the, it's the expanse of the love of God. For God so loved the world, not the world of uh, rivers and lakes and mountains 
and, and, and all of that. But the world of sinners lost and ruined by the fall. The expanse of it, God's love reaches right across planet Earth this evening. And none, none is excluded. We will look at the evidence of God's love. People often say to me, surely there's no evidence that God loves a world. If God loved the world, why is there so much suffering? Why so many wars and pandemics? Well, the greatest, the greatest evidence of God's love is this. He gave his only begotten son, not simply to be a babe in a manger, but to be, to be a sacrifice upon the cross at Calvary. Take the guilty sinner's place and die in the stead of those that would otherwise perish. That's the, that's the evidence that God loves. What about the experience of God's love? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the personal experience of the love of God. You know it's beautiful and heartwarming to hear about the love of God. And to know that God loves the world of sinners. And just to keep it in the back of your mind. It's, uh, it's all very good. But I tell you, it's vital that you experience that love. And that you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your own Savior. That you put your trust in him. And here's the promise that God gives to all who trust the Savior. Not perish, but have everlasting life. The expanse of God's love. It's love without discrimination. Thought about that just this afternoon as I thought about this meeting. Without discrimination. We live in a world where discrimination seems to be a great problem. In every country, in every continent, in every society, there are those and they are discriminated against. Whether it's because of their color, whether it's because of their class, whether it's because of their religion. And we live in a world of discrimination I tell you when it comes to the God of heaven the creator of the, of the universe and the creator of mankind God God does not discriminate when it comes to his love God loves every man and woman boy and girl equally he loves us all whether whether we live in Ireland or whether you live in Africa or China whatever your religious background whatever your social standing there's a God in heaven and he loves you. That's the most wonderful truth. I can hardly express it in all its wonder. God would love you and God would love me. It's love without discrimination. It's love without explanation. You see, the truth is this. It's a wonder that God would love any of us. I said already, God doesn't love. Uh, it's not the world of, of, uh, of geography. And it's not the world of, world of animals or even, or even a vast array of angels. But God loves sinners. That's the truth that the Bible tells us in another verse. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is love without explanation because here's the truth of the Bible. God is a holy God. And in his holiness, he finds sin absolutely abhorrent. And he hates sin. And he will, must and will punish sin. And yet this Bible tells me that God loves sinners. And every one of us is a sinner. As a little boy, I learned that I, that I am a sinner. That's how I was born. And this Bible says that's how you were born. The psalmist David says, behold, I was Brought forth in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. We're all sinners. Unfit for God's heaven. And bound to perish. In hell and the lake of fire. If we're never cleansed of our sins. And yet there's a God loves us. He loved us with an everlasting love. Before we ever had a being. He knew our name. He knew all about us. And his love has been set upon us. Love without Discrimination, love without explanation. There is no explanation except this. God is love. God is love. And God can do nothing else than love sinners like you and me. And I bow every day and thank God that he ever loved me. 
I worship him, and he devised a plan that I might be with him eternally. It's love without reservation. Love without reservation. God doesn't love some more or less than others. He doesn't look on someone and, and, and love them less and care for them less. God longs for the utmost blessing for every soul of Adam's ruined race. So the expanse of God's love. Just let before I leave it, let me tell you, whoever you are, God loves you. And Christ died on the cross that you might be saved. And God longs to bless you with everlasting life that you might throughout the countless ages of eternity. You say, give me the evidence. Show me how it is that God loves me. Well, here the evidence is in the very verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the evidence that God loves you and God loves me is Calvary's cross. The Bible tells us about the coming into the world of the Lord Jesus. And he gave his Son, the person, the only begotten. That's his unique Son. The Lord Jesus Christ, he who ever was God, he who ever was with God, he who ever was equal to God, came a moment in the divine plan. That he became a man, born of the virgin, wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Thus the Savior of the world that had come. And he lived a holy, spotless, sinless life on earth. That would never meet our need. That proved that he was the Lamb of God without blemish and without spot. He must go to the cross at Calvary. And the price of God's love was his beloved son nailed alive upon the cross. And here is what the Bible says. The Lord made to meet upon him, that is on the Lord Jesus, the iniquity of us all. The prophet Isaiah says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The punishment that brings our peace was upon him. And with his strife, we are here, and the mighty price that God was willing to pay in order to dis demonstrate his love, and because of his love, in order to reach and provide salvation for you and me, was the death of his beloved sinless Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on Calvary's cross. We sometimes sing, he took the guilty sinner's place and suffered in his stead for man, for me, O miracle of grace. For me, the Savior bled. And on that cross, Christ also once suffered for sins. The just one for the unjust ones. That he might bring us to God. That's the price. And on the cross, the Lord Jesus Christ, he suffered it all. He paid it all. He finished the work. He satisfied the claims. There was no more punishment could be meted out. All was exacted upon him in order that salvation might be provided for you and me. He died. He was buried and God raised him from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of God and there's salvation now. We sometimes sing there's life in the risen Lord. What was the purpose of it all? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the reason that the Savior went to Calvary. That's the reason that the Holy God punished his beloved son as if he were sin itself. Why did he do it? In order that anyone that puts their trust in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, it's, uh, this is the experience, experiencing of God's love. The experience of it. It's a personal thing. That's the first point I want to make. That's all general. And we know that God loves the world. But here's the great discovery that God loved me. And he gave his son to die on that cross for me. As if there never had been another sin in the world. Jesus died for me. The night I got saved as a little boy of eight years old. That was the truth that I grasped. I couldn't grasp very much theology. But I understood that on the cross, the Lord Jesus, he died for a world of sinners. And if he died for a world of sinners, he died for Wesley Martin. As if there never had been another sinner in the world. Jesus died for me. 
personal. And I personally embraced the love of God and took the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus to be my very own and received him as my Savior. It's personal. It's precious. Oh, how precious it is to know that I am loved of God, to know that I belong to him, to know that my soul is eternally secure in his hand. Experience of divine love. I tell you, we will experience this, experience it, those of us who are saved, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. The Apostle Paul was a great theologian, and many mysteries that were revealed to him are written in Holy Scripture by his hand. But I often think that the height of Paul's theology is found in Galatians 2 and 20. He says, the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. That's the experience of divine love. That's the embrace of divine love. Was for me, yes, all for me. The love of God, so great, so free. I wonder would you be able, as a lost, guilty sinner, realizing that God loves me, and I'll perish if I die of my sins. Put your trust in his beloved son who died on the cross for a sinner like you. Take God's word for it. Whosoever believeth in him should not, will not, cannot perish, but has everlasting life, the life of God in your very soul. And he says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish bound for heaven. I quote the verse and close in prayer, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You trust him, and I'll meet you in heaven. May God bless his word, shall we pray. Our Father, we come to thee at the close of these precious moments. We thank thee for this wonderful verse. We could never exhaust the great bank of divine truth that is contained therein. Eternal ages will not be sufficient to reveal it all. We thank thee that thou dost love a world. We thank thee that thou dost love sinners. We thank thee that thou dost give thy Son and all who trust him have everlasting life. We pray to bless thy word now spoken. Grant that someone will find Christ this very day in our Lord Jesus' worthy and precious name. Amen. Thank you for listening.